Welcome to another edition of INN CEO Talks. Joining me today is Rowan Yashimska of E3 Metals. And E3 Metals uh, trades on the Toronto uh, Stock Exchange, the Venture Exchange, under the symbol ETMC. Joining me now is uh, Rowan. Rowan, uh, welcome. Uh, how are you this morning? Thank you. I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, you are in a very uh, interesting position with E3 Metals. You've just had uh, your PEA assessment come out, and it's looking pretty good. It must give you uh, quite a boost, uh, knowing that uh, the valuation around um, you know what E3 Metals is doing is is uh, viewed as positive. Uh, let's talk about that, and then let's talk a little bit about your role with the company, and then more about this you know rather exciting project that you have underway in alberta so let's start with yeah, the pea good. results the assessment all right yeah so as you know we released some excellent results uh, excellent npv and irr um, and we're really excited to have been able to bring these economics to the market this is really the first time that we've been able to demonstrate the potential for our project in its entirety to um, economically produce high-grade lithium chemicals on our resource in Alberta using our direct lithium extraction technology. So that's quite a milestone for E3 Metals as a company. Well, it certainly is. And of course, uh, you know, that technology and the resource that you are mining is quite an interesting one. Let's talk a little bit about the history of that and the way in which you're extracting this lithium from it. Uh, first of all, where is it located and what's the history of the resource that you're able to uh, to utilize or uh, um, <laughs> what's, what's the right word to be able to, uh, to to capitalize on? Yes, absolutely. So our resource is located within the Leduc Formation in Alberta. So that's a formation that's been historically exploited for oil and gas production. Um, so our resource is actually the brine. So the water that sits underneath the oil and gas reservoirs. People typically refer to that as formation water. And so what our project is planning to do is to take that brine and selectively extract the lithium from it. That's really the heart of our technology, which is that first piece of the primary extraction, and that's what we call direct lithium extraction. So once we've taken that lithium from the water, then we process that lithium into high grade battery chemicals, and those can then be used um, anywhere in the world. So by cathode manufacturers, and that would feed into the electrification of vehicles and uh, energy storage and all of the exciting developments that we're all hearing about in the battery space. So you actually have quite an interesting process because when people think about the extraction of lithium from any kind of water base, they think, oh, okay, you've got to like evaporate off the water and then uh, extract that resource. But that's not the technology that you're using. You're using this ion technology. Could you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, exactly. So you're, you're correct. It's typically when you have a brine resource, the first step, the first concentration step is to evaporate most of the water off or a large percentage of that water. And that's because these brines have typically been explored and developed in South America. So the climates are much more arid. There's many more days of the year that you can actually um, productively use solar evaporation to remove that water. And so it's a different process in that respect. But for us, the real heart of our process, the direct lithium extraction technology is as you said, using ion exchange. So to selectively take lithium as an ion from the solution and then strip it out of the brine into a much purer, higher grade concentrate that we can then process downstream. So we don't have that concentration of everything in the brine. We're really just hand picking out the lithium and processing that into our final product. What you're doing here, of course, is some of the innovative work that is coming out of Alberta right now is they're looking at ways of taking what had been their primary natural resource, which was a fossil fuel based uh, product and saying, OK, how else can we use this? How else can we use it in a way that meets the energy needs of the future? Uh, I know that you're working with Alberta Innovates, but who else are you working with? That's 
Good question. Um, yeah, so we're working with Alberta Innovates. We have a lot of support from the province as well. We recently had the Minister of Energy, Sonia Savage, at our office for a uh, an announcement. Um, and and you're right to talk about the synergies between E3's needs and E3's project and the strengths in Alberta. Um, from a very high level, our project looks like a conventional oil and gas project. Um, so for that reason, we really are able to draw on all of that experience, the skilled technical workforce, the supply chains that exist today in Alberta. Um, and that gives us a lot of confidence in our ability to take our plans in the PEA and really develop them further and bring this project into commercial production. So let's also talk about your role within the company because you have an interesting history. You came to E3 Metals from Hatch, which is a, you know, a substantial organization. What was it about E3 Metals that made you say, yes, I'm going to make this move? I was really attracted to E3 Metals because of the you know, two big pieces that E3 has. E3 has the technology angle. And my background as a chemical engineer and my focus on extractive metallurgy made that really appealing to me. It's, it's really exciting to be doing new things and to be, you know, developing something that, you know, isn't an off the shelf solution. Um, in addition to that, I'm really interested in the resource. E3 isn't just a technology play. It's a technology company that has this resource. And so we own it and we're able to really capture a lot of value from that resource. Let's talk about the uh, quality of this lithium as well, because you know people go, oh yeah, lithium, but not all lithium is, is made the same. What we're talking about here is a high quality battery grade lithium. Do I have that right? Yes, so when you talk about lithium, so lithium is an element and, and lithium does, um, you know, it does exist as a metal. Some producers produce a metal and the form of lithium that's used really depends on the product and the, the manufacturer of the cathode um, for the battery specifications. So in our case, our project and our PEA is outlining a process to produce high grade lithium hydroxide monohydrate. So that's a chemical that is typically going into these really high performing lithium ion battery cathodes. Well, and this is the uh, level of quality that uh, organizations like Tesla are demanding as they are ramping up their battery production, uh, as I understand. And that whole uh, market for high-grade uh, battery lithium is exploding. As I understand, it is uh, growing at a rate that's expected to be, you know, uh, seven or eight times what it is now within the next 10 years. Yes, absolutely. The forecasts are very exciting for growth in the lithium ion battery sector. I think we all see, you know, adoption of electrification, uh, electric vehicles, energy storage around ourselves. I see Tesla's driving down the street all the time. And um, I think that's it's really exciting for us to be able to you know, position ourselves to help supply lithium to that growing industry and and really um, help alleviate future bottlenecks that might otherwise exist in the lithium supply chain. So with Tesla being one of the uh, most significant battery manufacturers, especially here in North America, how important is it that this resource and E3 Metals is also based in North America? So I think it's important for us that we're based in North America because we do see this growth and you know these really exciting indicators in the battery space and electric vehicle manufacturing in north america um, but also you know the battery world is international this high grade lithium hydroxide monohydrate that we'll be producing you know could reasonably be used anywhere in the world um, and so that's that's very uh Promising right. for us as well. Well, yes, I know because in in Europe, with the move by 2030 to have removed the uh, manufacturing of uh, petroleum uh, fueled automobiles by 2030, the demand for electrically powered vehicles is already surging, and we're just 10 years away from that that need. So you're right; the global uh, requirement is 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 growing in so many different sectors. So what are the next steps right now for E3 Metals? Uh, you know, you've got a good PEA. Um, you've, you've been able to demonstrate that uh, you've got a, a great long-term resource. Um, where do we go from here? 
So for us, we've got two major milestones that we're focusing on advancing over the next year. So the first of which is to pilot our technology. So that's the direct lithium technology that I was describing earlier. And the pilot would really be our opportunity to build it at a small but meaningful scale on a well in an oil field in Alberta. And that just allows us to prove that technology to the market. Uh, this is something that we're considering doing in 2021, and we expect to begin construction next year. In addition to that, the other piece of this, the other major milestone that we are advancing is the resource. So we currently have a large inferred mineral resource, and we'll be focusing heavily on upgrading this to a measured and indicated category. So this will be done through advancement of our well testing in the field, as well as additional geology and geophysics. Now, <clears throat> just to remind viewers, your long-term objective is not to vend this out, but rather to build out the company and become an operating uh, entity. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true. Our technology is being developed for our resource. Our test work is being done on our brine, and this is really a technology to enable our resource so that we can become a producer of high-grade lithium chemicals. Well, uh, it sounds like you're in a pretty exciting position. The uh, the move to uh, you know demonstrating that you that you've got an on-site extraction uh, facility, which is not uh, a, an enormous footprint, as I understand the technology, it's pretty nimble. Um, you know, especially when you take a look at uh, so many other forms of extraction, this is, this works quite well. Prove that out, and then start to uh, uh, confirm that you can supply that market. It's a pretty exciting place to be in right at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And exactly when you talk about the footprint, we're right now looking at using a, a very small fraction of the type of footprint that a similar size lithium producer would otherwise use with a more traditional method. So we estimate to use about 3% of the um, typical land that would be required. And that really fits into our um, priority to become one of the best lithium producers from an ESG standpoint. And that's very important to us as a company. Well, I really appreciate the E3 Metals uh, story because I look at the fact that you are taking what had been considered to be a resource that maybe didn't have much value for many years, just sat there. And now, uh, and it comes, of course, from uh, the oil and gas sector, and you're taking that resource and applying it to the needs of a new electric powered uh, vehicle and so much of our, our lives is uh, powered by uh, batteries and so on. And, and so you're taking a resource that had, had, had for a long time didn't look like it had any use and now it's meeting the needs of a new energy future. Well done. Thank you. Yes, yeah. it's very exciting. I think completing this sort of trans energy transition in Alberta and, and Canada and the rest of the world is, is a very exciting path to be on. Well, I'm looking forward to future updates because I, you know, I, I want you to be a success for a whole variety of reasons. One, as a strong operating company, but then also that you're meeting the energy needs uh, of Canadians and others around the world as we move forward and into uh, a world that is electrified. Thanks for joining me, Rowan. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, we have a lot of exciting milestones to achieve in the next year and should definitely expect some exciting news from E3. Well, I'll be looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.